Howdy gang and welcome back to Pool School. So you've tested your pool water and found that you have a low alkalinity reading, but a high pH reading. How do you adjust one in one direction and the other in the other direction? Well, that's what today's episode is all about. So what do you say we dive right in? Alrighty gang, before we get started, I want to once again thank you for watching this video, remind you to like this video by clicking that little thumbs up button below this video. Also subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already and please share my channel with everyone you know who owns a pool and who's wanting to save a ton of money servicing their pool themselves. Also don't forget to check out my latest membership website poolschooler.com. It'll be right here in the middle of the screen, poolschooler.com. It's the next level of do-it-yourself pool ownership, and it's got a lot of tools, tricks, checklists, and everything to help you save a lot more money servicing your pool yourself. Alrighty, so as I said, you've tested your pool chemistry. If you've not learned how to do that yet, please see my video. I'll put a link to it in the description below on how to test your pool water. It's a really good video and it's really easy to do. So you've tested your pool chemistry and you found that your alkalinity is low and your pH is high. All right. Now, typically in Arizona, um, we usually, I usually find with the pools that I do, if the alkalinity is high, the pH is high and vice versa. But that's not necessarily the case in everybody's pools and it's not necessarily the case in other parts of the country or around the world. So we're going to start by talking about how to adjust the alkalinity. Typically experts suggest get the alkalinity adjusted first, then adjust the pH, and that seems to work pretty good, so that's kind of how the order I'm going to do it, all right? The two things that you're going to need to do this, to raise the alkalinity and to lower the pH, you're going to need to raise the alkalinity, you're going to need bicarbonate of soda, okay? Bicarbonate of soda is also called baking soda, all right? So Arm & Hammer makes it. Um, I would suggest not getting products like Alkalinity Up or pH Up or pH Down. Some of those products contain other things besides just the product that helps bring the chemistry where it needs to be. And the more chemicals you start adding to your pool, the more difficult it gets and then we create a lot more messes. So I suggest keeping it as clean as, and pure as possible. So bicarbonate of soda or uh, baking soda to raise the alkalinity and then to lower the pH you're going to want to use liquid muriatic acid now really quickly I'm going to show you or tell you how to do that because you really don't need to see it I'm just going to talk you right through it okay so remember what I said we're first going to try to get that alkalinity up all right remember this also anytime you add chemicals unless I note this, you're going to want to have your pool pump motor and equipment running while you do this. It will help mix the chemicals in and disperse them or distribute them around the pool water better. So make sure that your pump motor is running while you add the chemicals, all right? So to raise the alkalinity, you're going to take, if your typical play pool, and even if it's, a, if, it's, if it's an above ground smaller pool, you're going to want to cut this down a bit. But I'm basing it on a play pool or something larger, anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 uh, gallons. So obviously, if it's, if it's bigger, you're going to want to adjust a little bit up. But I suggest using no more than one pound at a time with the equipment running, take a pound of your bicarbonate of soda, and it's in granular form or powder form, and you're just gonna walk around the perimeter of your pool and distribute it around the perimeter of your pool. Now, sometimes it can get a little cloudy when it does that, but it'll all dissolve. It typically doesn't, but if it does, don't worry about it. And then let it run, let your equipment run for about an hour or so, and then test your chemistry again and check the alkalinity. If your alkalinity is up to where the ideal level is, then you're good to go, and then you can start working on the pH. If not, repeat the process with another pound of bicarbonate of soda, let the equipment run for another hour to distribute it and mix it in really go. Test, test your water again, and if it's where it needs to be, you're good to go. Repeat that process as, as much as you need to to get that alkalinity up, okay? But again, I suggest never adding more than one pound of the bicarbonate of soda at a time, okay? All right, once you've got that alkalinity up, we can deal with the pH. Okay, so you've got your alkalinity up, and now we need to deal with the pH, all right? It's really simple, you're gonna use uh, liquid muriatic acid, it usually comes in one gallon jugs, and you're gonna wanna add no more than one quart of liquid muriatic acid, time, acid at a time, remember, no more than one quart. Again, as I said earlier, you're gonna want your pump 
motor running so that your filter is moving water through the pool to help distribute it. And because it's liquid, it's gonna mix in there pretty quickly. Take the, the bottle or, or put it in a one quart container or typically if it's a gallon jug there's four quarts in a gallon and you can pretty much eyeball it that's what I do and again be careful not to splatter the stuff on your leg or something because it can't eat a hole in your clothes and it can irritate your leg if you do get any on your on your leg flush it with water and that should take care of it but you're gonna walk around the perimeter of your pool and you're gonna distribute one quart and no more than one quart of the liquid muriatic acid around your pool wait an hour with the equipment running test your chemistry see where your pH is. If it's down to where it needs to be, you're good to go. If not, repeat the process, all right? Now remember, you're gonna be in the ideal ranges of the alkalinity and the pH, so there's a range. So you don't have to have it exact. As long as you're in the ideal range for alkalinity and then in the ideal range for pH, you're good to go. And that's the way it works, all right? Okay, so I wanted to quickly give you the diagram of the test strip label so you can see your pH and alkalinity ideal levels. If you notice of the pH, it says 7.2 to 7.8 is your okay level. Okay, if you're in that range, you're fine. And then your total alkalinity, which is measured in parts per million, you know, that's a little parenthetical below total alkalinity, it says PBM, between 80 and 120 parts per million is good for your total alkalinity. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to get it exactly in the middle or anything like that. As long as you're somewhere in those ranges, you're totally fine and that's good enough. So folks, that's my video on raising your alkalinity while lowering your pH. Again, it's pretty easy to do. It's not rocket science. If it was, like I said before, I wouldn't be doing this. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below this video, or you can email me and I will do my best to get back to them as quickly as possible. Sometimes that's a little bit difficult. My email address will come across the bottom of the screen. It's kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Thank you once again for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to check out my new membership website, poolschooler.com, so you can find the newest and more tools to help you save a ton of money servicing your pool themselves. Okay? Until we meet again, remember to have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids and elderly folk and pets around water. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.